Hey everyone, um, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be recreating this dress, or my attempt of, and I'm going to be making a video of it and doing a voiceover recording for you guys so you can create along and uh, hopefully make this dress yourself. Since we cannot share any designs yet, fingers crossed that that comes in multiplayer, um, I hope this helps you. This is my old celestial dress. It's one of the very first dresses that I made. And people have been asking me since way in the beginning, how do you make this? Um, can you make a tutorial on this? Because it's, it fits the wings that we get perfectly, which is one of the reasons that I decided to make this dress to begin with. Because why get beautiful wings and then not be able to wear anything with it, right? So let's start creating. We're first going to pick the uh, Sweetheart Strapless dress. Uh, I've upped the speed a little bit on the, on the video, so you don't have to see the really long designing process. I'm going to take a patch of skin color here, which is the third from the bottom. Uh, for my skin color, it's the closest. And you put a black gradient over it, and it creates that effect of, uh, of lace, essentially. You can find the gradient in shapes, and the shape I took here was a star in shapes. The very first thing that we're doing to make this dress is lining the bottom and the waist with the clouds, because they're similar to those on the wings. I'd prefer to make a little bit smaller so you can get a bit more detail in, but you know we're stuck with 50 layers still, so that's what we have to work with. So you can see that I'm lining the clouds now along the bottom nicely. Uh, in the center I like to keep it symmetrical rather than uh, different heights and stuff like that. I did do that on my Sugar Rush, Sugar Rush dress. Say that ten times fast. Um, but here I like to keep it a little bit more symmetrical. And then I line it along the waist because I know that's where I'm going to want it. The next thing I'm going to do is apply the gradient. Um, here I'm not quite sure, certain whether I want it over it or under it, but I'm first going to make uh, a nice line around it. Now the issue with gradients is you need three to cover the entire bottom of the dress, and that means aligning them. Now knowing the exact height is already an issue, but next to that there's these little tiny seams that will always be a bother. But I found out that instead of trying to align the max sized squares, you can just use the resizing one to tiny inch it a little bit closer or a little bit further away. It, it gives you a little bit more control than just trying to align the big squares, uh, which is a thing that I address, addressed in my original tutorial. So it's a new tip. Try and align it with the sizing, rather. It, it will make it that the gradient is not equally sized naturally, but it's so minuscule that you're not really going to see a difference. So after having done the initial gradient and the clouds that I wanted uh, in their positions, I am going to start with the flourishing. Uh, you can find these in flourish, and first I made them along the chest because I want them to cut nicely to where the uh, skin color is, so where the, where the dress is cut. And then here along the waist where I want that really nice moon shape in the middle. It's not perfect, but it's, it, it fits the theme. So here you can see I'm just, you know, trying to see how I, I want these. It's the whole um, designing process. Since I'm not using the old dress as a reference, but I'm kind of just redoing it by memory, uh, it is going to be slightly different. So now I want to do the back. I want to do the flourishes on the back side of the dress, but the wings are in the way. So I'm going to be removing those again. So here we're going to be aligning the flourishes to the back side of the dress. I want them to connect nicely to the flourishes that come from the front. So I'm going to be trying and doing that. Once you've placed it on one side and you like the position, you just go into the advanced options. You click the second icon, as you can see, the one with the stripe with the two circles. That will duplicate it to the other side in the exact same position. I've explained this in my uh, other tutorial before. So if you are unfamiliar with the basics of the tools, and this is all a little bit too, too much, too fast, too daunting, uh, take a look at that. 
uh, do the create along for my Lion King dress. And it'll help you get familiar with the, with the tools. Because I'm, I'm basically skipping over explaining everything in this one. Uh, because I've done it before. But there you can see me every time I have a flourish in the right position. I will click the advanced options. Then the second one to duplicate it to the other side the way that I want it. Now here I'm toying around with these two front flourishes. Because I didn't like that they took up the entire front. And I want to have a little bit of a gap. Um, so I'm... I'm just finding a position that I'm happy with here, which I now did. Copied it to the other side, as I explained, and now I can add these other flourishes. So the second kind that we get, uh, minus the big pumpkin one from the Ultimate Edition, which I won't be using, so everybody can recreate this. And to create this little thing in the middle, which I did earlier already there in the back. So I want kind of a similar thing going on, that's why I moved these from their original position and the reason i wanted this gap is to add these moons and stars to keep the whole celestial theme going which you can find under celestial now on the old dress i had initially a lot of moons incorporated into the flourishes uh, which eventually i had to remove again because 50 layers so here i'm trying to get that same moon effect on the chest but the chest is different than the other uh, dress because i added the um, the lace part to it i'm adding the wands now because i do want the star effect and then after placing them approximately where i want them i'm gonna be which is a lot of fun be scrolling all the way down and all the way back up to put these wands all the way to the lower layers so you can see me doing that. It's very time consuming. So I hope in the future we can multi-select. Or we have a clearer uh, way of scrolling through it. Because here I want them above the clouds. Because I want the stars to fall over the clouds on the waist. But I want them below all the flourishes. Which are a lot at this point. So you can see it adds, adds these little stars on the chest. And I'm going to be doing the same further down the dress. Here I'm trying to align them as perfectly as I can to the flourish because I want to hide the wand. You can use other layers to cover up the wand if you just want the stars, which I have done on a variety of my fairy dresses. If you look really closely, you can see it. Um, but that's just more layers. And as you can see, I'm already sitting at 36 out of 50, so it's going really fast. These I want below the clouds because I want the tip of the wands to be hidden uh, next next to the fact that they're behind the flourishes they're sticking somewhat out so I want the clouds to hide them it's just a question of a lot of layering with with a lot of designs so you can play around with that uh, because you don't have to replicate this exactly naturally you can you know make the flourishes different put more stars and moons or less of these stars or you know what you want here i'm putting them at the bottom as well i'm trying to find a way that i can get them nicely to incorporate with the bigger stars and moon that i have there trying to put them behind the flourishes but realizes that is not going to happen so i'm going to hide them behind those clouds so first i'm going to find a position where i'm happy with And then I'm going to be dragging it all the way down. Now here, because I I put the gradient over the clouds, you can see that the wands fall behind that gradient. And because it's so fairly low on the dress, there's still a lot of color from the gradient. So you get that the stars have, uh, you know, not the hard yellow color, but this faded color. And it's it's kind of nice. I'm, I'm here when I'm creating it, I'm debating. You can see as I'm swapping it. I'm debating whether I like it with more gold stars or just a faded one to give that extra dimension. Um, I'm really unsure at this point. But I, I think I kind of like the extra dimension of it. I've done this on, on other dresses and you can do the same. Uh, the gradient doesn't go all the way to the top. So the more you move the stars up, the lesser uh, color they will get from the gradient. And they'll return to their original chosen color. 
um, but if with other dresses that you make, you can really play around with that. You can you can fade original motifs to get that little bit of gradient color and to get multicolors across the same one, even though you pick can only pick one color. So here I'm back to to the moons at the chest. Um, the the problem with this is is that when you in the advanced options, if you don't pick the globe option, so you just get a straight 2D sticker, because the, the, the bust is round, you get that it starts stretching on the sides if you pick the 2D option. Yet on the chest, if you pick the globe option, so you can see it stretching here, if you pick the globe option, it will make this really weird non-moon shape. So I'm, I'm not really happy with either. So I'm trying to make the moons as small as I can and trying to find a position where it doesn't stretch too much. Like here. Again, it's not identical to the first celestial dress, but I'm, I'm just trying to recreate a celestial dress. So you, yeah, you'll see me messing around with this uh, with these moons for a while because I'm just I, it's just not exactly the way that I want it. So I'm trying them upside down on the chest. I'm trying them here on the clouds see if I like it and again if you like a position on one side go in the advanced options pick the second option and it will copy it to the other side eventually I'll settle for uh, putting them on the chest like that because that's just yeah the better way I guess and now we're back to adding some gradients because I want just a little bit of color change coming up from the clouds uh, it needs to be fairly short because the chest is, is not too long. And the big problem is, is that, it, as always, gradients don't always fully go around. So I'm trying to incorporate that hard line of the gradient with the clouds that I have there. So you can hide it a little bit or give it a little bit of a um, effect of like a, a corset that you have over a dress. And to otherwise hide that hard line I'm, I'm adding a gradient to uh, the bottom side uh, again because it doesn't go fully around when you're going to the waist of the dress you can get away with using two the bottom of the dress has to be three but the top can be two the only real issue with, because I don't use it that often is that you have to, to to save on layering you have to make that cut straight in the middle of the front of the dress which I'm not the greatest fan of because, you know, that issue that you have with aligning it that little bit over, that little bit under, it, it can really show on certain designs of dresses if you don't have a lot going on. Now, fortunately, with this dress, there is a lot going on. There's stars, there's the flourishes, there's the moons, there's the clouds. So you can get away with doing it here because at this point, even though three would be nicer to cover it around, I really have to preserve my layers because, yeah, as you see, I'm on 45 out of 50. So I have five layers left to decorate this dress with. So to add on the hiding of the, of the things, I'm trying out some flourishes here. Just add a little bit of detail at the front. And now adjusting the gradient a little bit so it hides a little bit better. You can see 47 out of 50. So what are we going to do with the last three layers? I like how the gradients are sitting now. It's, it's not unnatural. So let's see what... I'm just testing out what I can do with the last three layers. I can add a bit more stars to the to the sides because I barely have any on the sides just the front and the back so I'm just testing this out I'm gonna be aligning them to the clouds so they can hide behind which that means scrolling all the way up through 49 layers grabbing it and then pulling it all the way down Fortunately, the pulling down is uh, is easy. God forbid you have to find that exact layer in the middle, which I've done multiple times. Now I kind of want this belt um, buckle kind of idea, so I'm testing it out with the star that I had. 
And what I'm doing here is duplicating the star that I have because it's been free uh, placing it. It's never going to be exact center. And then I, when copying it to the other side, you get a mirror. And then copying it again, you get the exact same position. Now, since I was dealing with two layers, I had to quickly delete a flourish so that I could do this. Then you delete the mirrored one, so the one that is not perfectly aligned. And then you have two exactly on top of another. I take the bottom one, and since it's already at minimum size, I, I change the bottom one to a darker color. And the top one, I or, or the bottom one, I slightly upsize. If you don't have it at minimum size, you can also downsize the top one. And you get this little lining around the star, as you can see. And this is me messing with the moons again, because um, it's just not exactly the way that I want it. And here you can see that the wands are slightly sticking out, so they're not perfectly hidden. So I'm just testing whether I want them longer, or in this case slightly shorter, so they're better hidden. So that's, that's what I'm doing. I found the position that I liked on one, and then copied it to the other, and then I have to drag it back to... Uh, the place in the middle and I have to find exactly where I want it here it can be a lot of fun when you're having uh, a lot of the same motifs and you have to find exactly where you want it in between but yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out so just for uh, for reference of putting the wings back on and then I usually pick a hairstyle and a hair color and, well, you know, necklaces, earrings, eyeshadow, all that to fit the theme. I like this with the headband, but it's not, yeah, not, not exactly what I want. And I really like this hair. So this is the one I'm picking. That's the old dress. It's a lot harder in colors. And this one has a bit more gradient going on. I'm just checking with a different color to get it closer to that so it's bluer now but yeah not quite happy with it you can also make it dark it will fit the um, the wizard hat that we get it will fit it a bit better if you don't want the wings but the hat instead but now um, going back to what i have just checking what uh, what colors i have here and then checking with this again And just yeah, playing with different colors on the gradients to see if it's, if it's better or not. Every time I'm done with a dress and I'm done on 50 layers and I'm kind of happy with it, I usually spend a good amount of time still fine-tuning colors or things like that. Which, depending on the dress, can take a lot of time. And then this fine-tuning uh, process happens numerous times. And then usually the next day, because I design in the evenings and everything is dark, in the game because fun I can't make my screenshots and my videos until the next day when it's daylight so then when I log on the next day I look at it and I'm like but what if I slightly do this or slightly do that and so on and so on so the fine-tuning process can almost take as long as making the dress in some cases and here I'm, I'm testing with the, the reason that I'm recording this longer is because here I'm testing with the gradients what we did all the way in the beginning where I put the gradient on top of the clouds and here I'm putting it below again so in favor of having stronger clouds I'm removing that extra gradient that we had on the stars so just for reference that's uh, the new and the old dress and uh, this is the result so if it was all too fast, I'm hoping that you can, uh, well, in YouTube, you can slow down the viewing speed or you can just press pause a lot. I just didn't want to make a 40 something, 40 minute something video for you to have to follow along and then see that slow designing process uh, the entire time of slightly moving left, slightly moving right. So I hope that uh, you liked the video. If you prefer that I do make it in the 40 minute window, I can also do that for a future one. Uh, take a look at my other dresses. I have all my dresses in a small video up on TikTok. And 
I have screenshots on them on Instagram as well because we only get 32 slots to design with and well to keep making I have to keep deleting and to hold on to them and to commemorate them I have them on Instagram and TikTok and occasionally I will make a uh, showcase video that I place here on YouTube as well so uh, take a look at those uh, see if there's another dress that that you would like me to make or to make a create along I don't have a lot of time to be recording because right now I'm hiding in a tiny room away from my husband and daughter so I can do this quick and it's cold it's freaking freezing um, but yeah I'll, I'll see if I can find time to do it again and I hope you know that you've learned something along the way again if it was too overwhelming too daunting take a look at my other tutorial I'll put all the links to the TikTok, the Instagram, the other tutorial in the description. So take a look there. And I hope you succeeded in making a celestial dress to match your wings. Or to match the hat if you want to make it darker. Um, show me what you've done. I would love to see. And uh, well, thank you for watching. And uh, hopefully till the next time. <laughs>